the studio session uh, with Chance when we worked on the Fool with it freestyle. That was the first time we sat down in the studio together, and uh, it was it was like really cool because to me personally, it was a, a point of validation where it's just like, how can anybody else deny me now? You know, like if Chance is willing to work with me and like reach out and wants to do something, like what's left? Well, not necessarily what's left, but as far as like in the hip hop community in Chicago, until you have, unfortunately. I don't want to say the right cosigns, but like enough people accept you and enough like rappers who are actually there welcome you in. Like everybody else just kind of writes you off unless they're a true fan, you know. But uh, it's it's cool. It's like you know I feel like I've been welcomed into like the circle of important Chicago rappers. You know what I mean? And not in the sense where we're sitting down and having coffee, but in the sense where when people are when kids leave Chicago to go to school this summer for college, they're gonna be like you know Chance the Rapper, Mick Jenkins, Super, you know. But also it was it was pretty like humbling because like. He's a, uh, he works a lot, you know, he kind of like lives in the studio from what I could tell, they had mattresses and stuff in there. It was easy for him because he's just on the mic, la 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 la. But with me, like I was really apprehensive and kind of like nervous a little bit because it was like, damn, like, it's like a very important job interview, you know, you can't really fuck up at all, you know, like, it's like, damn, like this is like my rap nigga job interview. <laughs> but uh, it's cool, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a nice guy. He's like really easy to work with, but uh, it, it was it was intimidating because, you know, it's a big opportunity. I think the biggest mis misconception of of Chicago artists is that we're all cutthroats. We're all just like hyper thugs to the point where there's no sensibility or anything like humane about us. Uh, I think in Chicago, growing up in Chicago, you have a natural grit to you. You have to have a grit to exist, otherwise you're a victim, you know, in one way or another. Everyone has that Chicago grit in one way or another, but like that, not all of us are, you know, we're not gonna all just shoot each other over like stepping on each other's shoes. We're not gonna just like, you know, you know, it's, 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 not, it's not as savage. It's not as like a big of a battleground as everyone thinks. Another misconception is we're all crabs in a bucket. You know, the analogy where, you know, you can't climb out because everyone's dragging you down. It's that way in small pockets, but like it doesn't represent like the whole Chicago at all. Cause like there's plenty of pockets in Chicago where everyone doesn't care about that. They just work together and flourish and you know, so and so. But uh, yeah, I, I think those are the two biggest misconceptions. We're all savages and we're all like crabs in the bucket. I'm not a very selfish artist. I don't completely make music just to satisfy my fans, but I don't solely make music for myself either. I found a happy medium of understanding what people want to listen to and what I want them to hear. Like, if DJ Paul can come in here with all his fucking hits, Grammys, come in here alone and feel comfortable, like, don't bring your don't bring your posse through, man. Like, if we want to deal with you, bring yourself, you know what I'm saying? Just made me realize, like... Another part of the fucking moment is we got kicked off the tour two shows in, just because obviously what we were doing wasn't to a certain standard, so... For me, that was quite like, I kind of took it personally, but I guess in terms of the bigger picture, it was a good experience. And even talking about it to people, you can kind of see that it's uh, something I'm happy I did, so. I took over, I was just like, well, ain't nobody gonna talk about waves and the inspiration and why better than me. So I start talking, I'm like, yo, I started creating waves, somebody on the other end of this table starts talking. So I start speaking louder. So I started creating waves, somebody else starts talking. So I look at my manager, I'm just like, I look at John, I'm like, 